when I when I was a bit younger, I was probably a little bit ahead of my station, maybe. <laughs> like you know the way shooter would always just walk around like <laughs> <laughs> And was, we, we had one match, and I was goal kicking. Um, it was at these schoolboy games, and it was like five or six thousand people at it, and the opposition were abusing me like the whole game. Um, and I kicked a conversion. Uh, at one point, they were screaming at me during it, and I just turned around. <laughs> 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 oh my god. Oh, I was scared of dentists and the dark. Oh, I was scared of pretty girls and starting conversation now. Oh, my friends are turning green. She's a magician's assistant in her dreams. Imagine that. What a perfect way to start the show. Hello and welcome to this week's Offload with me, Mark Edwards, joined as always by the multi-talented Ryan Wilson of Glasgow Warriors, of course, and Bristol Bears prop, Max Lave. How are we doing, boys? Max, go and squat. Do something on your squat rack. Um, boys, we have got a, uh, a packed show uh, this week. We're going to be joined uh, by the hottest prospect in English rugby and Alfie Barberi. Uh, he's going to be coming on later on to discuss his meteoric rise. And also, ex-Irish uh, international, British Lion and, and Ryan Wilson's best friend, Rob Kearney, to discuss his incredible career. Are you, are you, Ryan, I can sense you're pretty excited. Very excited. Well... You know, mates, roomies. It's amazing what a week can do to a man. And, you know, so, yeah, I'm very excited for my old mate Rab to come on there now. Rab, you have to call him Rab now. The pe- You ever heard that? Like, that's definitely a Scottish thing, isn't it? Because they call Rob up here Rab, like Rabbi Burns. Oh, by the way, talking about Rabbi Burns. Do you know who Rabbi Burns is, Max? Rabbi Burns? Yeah. No. Famous Scottish poet. And the kids have to do a poem from school. Mate, hilarious. Hel- Wait there, I'm getting on. Mate, this, this is my daughter. Oh, okay. How old's Bella? Bella's five, maybe? Four or five-ish? Roughly. So they all have to do a Scottish poem and remember it. Yence I had a wee doggy made of string. He used to bark because he couldn't sing. Yen day I took him a donut at a town and at a lamppost he ran run and a run. No a wee doggy I haven't got. He went and tied himself into a knot. That's what they're teaching it's, kids at school up here. Proper Glaswegian like oh, slang. Wow. Yeah, wow. It's got, I mean, we could kind of. I get it. But you could recite that. Really, Can you believe that? That's unreal. That's why my kids are speaking with a Glaswegian accent. And when I saw Hoggy at the weekend, his daddy talking like that. <laughs> yeah. <got> English <laughs> accents. <laughs> he's absolutely gutted about it as well just swap kids <laughs> mental eh so yeah that's what's um, that's what's going on here at the moment we're, we're teaching the kids how to do Scottish well Glaswegian poems Rabbi Burns you've heard of Burns Night haven't you oh so he's the guy it's named after got you guys we got it uh, I'm being I'm being told off already I, we, we've been we've been recording for four minutes uh right some breaking news a couple of hours ago Eddie Jones naming six uncapped players in his squad uh, for the training camp ahead of six nations including our guest Alfie Barber but uh, there's no room at the end for George Ford arguably the form player in the premiership this year uh, boys are we are we surprised by that it almost feels personal it's a damn travesty isn't it yeah no I think he's definitely done enough to be in there Lost one game. Crazy little bastard. Should should definitely be in there. Yeah, it's outrageous. Who 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 are the other tens? There's a few young boys, eh? Young tens yeah, in there. The Bath ten, Orlando Bailey. Orlando Bailey, yeah. See, I like him. He's talented, but he ain't George Ford, my boy. He yeah, that's George crazy, eh? Yeah. You ain't our kid. You ain't our kid, George. Yeah. yeah Gotta um, be in there. And yeah, he's around. player of the month in a twice in a row. Uh, George Ford, that is. 
<laughs> Eddie Jones does love a blacklist every now and again, though, doesn't he? He sort of banishes you to the never realm. I'm trying to find it here. I haven't, I'll be honest, I haven't seen the England squad. I'm guessing Marcus Smith's in there. Yeah. yeah. So there Smith. you are. That's because they, they don't want any messing about. They're just going to start Marcus Smith and there's going to be no like, oh, maybe, maybe it's just start Marcus Smith. I'm foul at 12 ish. He is the chosen one. Yeah. I, that's yeah. it. He is beginning to believe. Yeah. He's just like the Neo of English rugby right now. Okay. Yeah. Didn't he carve up again at the weekend? Yeah, he did, he did some. What a match. There were some nice touches. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think so Cardiff think won. It, but fair enough. I'm getting. Do we think that's the end of um of Do we think that's the end of George Ford's international career? <sighs> Come on. No. Did no is, he, is he going to play? He's at the height of his powers, isn't he? Really, essentially. Um. Yeah, it's a weird one, isn't it? Is it is it the most savage game of mind games of all time from Eddie Jones to just kind of bring out the greatest element of George Ford out of himself, or yeah, is he has he has he been? But why? Because he'd been playing bloody well. Why wasn't he playing the weekend? Wasn't Freddie Burns um, playing? Good question. I'm not sure. Was I don't know. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I saw Freddie Burns playing. I don't know whether George Ford was starting, but um. Yeah, that's um, that's quite yeah, quite interesting that he's not been picked. I don't know what's going on there. I don't know what's going on. But listen, he's not over and done with, is he? He's he's a good, bloody good player. Um, and some of us managed to wa- wangle our way back into international teams now and then. Just takes a couple of injuries, a bit of tip acting <laughs> and coffee here and there. <laughs> it's been it's been done before, boys. It's been done before. <laughs> I'm trying to have a look. Yeah, I fucking... I don't know. Anyway. Marcus Smith's going to start at 10. Like, that's that's a given, isn't that's it? A, yeah, that's absolutely as, happening. As soon as any injuries, they're going to be calling old George Ford back. Owen um, Farrell, I just think, yeah, he'll play 12. He'll play 12. It's late 13. Yeah. Okay, there we go. So, how? But having seen how exciting England were without Farrell um, and seeing how Eddie Jones is clearly trying to freshen things up. Are we a bit surprised that, you know, that Faz is still being picked? Are England a better team with or without him? I don't know. I think he brings a lot of sort of intangibles, doesn't he, to the culture as well. We, we, you will hear about his, like, his madness, his intensity around the camps and how much he brings to the leadership and culture. I hate using that word, a bit of a bogey word. But, yeah, I think he's, like, a very... He's like drives, standards, etc. in the whole of those camps. So I think he's like a mainstay for, for Eddie. Like his henchman, his right-hand man. Um, what I want to know is which are the ones that are unvaccinated, because I've just read that here. Eddie Jones can select unvaccinated players for England despite the travel rules. Ooh, who's unvaccinated? Ooh, ooh, no oh, there's got to be some Exeter boys in there. They're anti-vax, aren't they? They're all anti vax What about our old mate, hey, Noly, back in there? <laughs> Noly, oh, how good. That well, it must good. have been us. I must have, you know. Oh, I think so. Or is 100 tries at the weekend. You got him back in England, right? In, in England team. Or the teetotal, just no alcohol's done wonders for his anatomy. He's just actually finally stayed fit for a while. Good on him. Good on him. Well, here you are. England met the 85% vaccination target for the Auckland Internationals, but the centre Henry Slade is among the highest profile to have previously expressed his hesitancy. So Slade is, is an anti-vax, is he? I think his was actually because he's had a bad diabetes. reaction to a to, yeah, yeah. Well, because of his di- something before diabetic. because of diabetic. Yeah. yeah. His autoimmune condition. Oh well, well we'll have to ask we we'll have to ask our old mate Alfie when he comes on if he's an anti-vax, then we can whittle him out of the out of the list. <laughs> this is the witch hunt. A, a, <laughs> a weekend full of amazing European rugby. Max, congrats on your 28-17 victory against Stade Francais. Back to back wins. Uh, do you feel like the squad are back to their best now? Yeah, there's definitely a there's been a, a rally of sorts. We're feeling ourselves slightly, but it's only two games, do you know what I mean? We've got to keep Keep going on. I saw <laughs> you see that meme the boys put up of uh, the office about us making the. Um... <laughs> that did tickle me. <laughs> hey, you'll take them. You'll take them wherever you get them. It did tickle me. But I, I had a chuckle. I had a chuckle. But yeah, um, man, it was a good game. It was good fun. Felt like we 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 definitely got the better of them. Um, got a bit loosey goosey in that last um, 
last 10 minutes of the first half and let them back in. But yeah, it was a good game, man. Ginormous pack, as always, from the Frenchmen, the great, the great Parisians who donned the pink. So it was good stuff. It was good stuff. Who impressed you most for them? Um, Zaga was pretty cool. The lock, really, really gifted athlete, moves well for a big fella. Um, Toulouse Sibianu, more elusive than an honest man in Parliament, as always. Um, yeah, they were just, yeah, but just there's so much cool star factor to all those cool French teams. Uh, La Mape in the middle, he was um, robust, the minibus doing his thing. It was, um, hey, it was good fun. It was good crack. Okay, let's move on to the next games. Like, oh, up. no, I need <laughs> this. Uh, yeah, I want to. Hey, hang on, hang on. We're yeah, talking about impressive Maxis, performances. <laughs> I, was watching, uh, what... I was watching this one as well. I was, I was feeling for you, Rai. I was feeling for you. Firstly, many congratulations on your 200th cap for Glasgow. Thank you very much. What a fantastic day. That's enough. <laughs> oh, no. Okay, talk us through that bittersweet sort of weekend that you had. What can I say, boys? It was, um, it was one one to forget at the same time. It started well. Yeah, it started well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I didn't when they told me I was on the bench for it. Oh yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah, that bit. Two and a half, two and a half years, I think, since three years since I've been on the bench, and then, uh, yeah, mate, it's your uh, two hundred this week. Do you fancy riding the pine? <laughs> what? All right, thanks. <laughs> Why not? Um, but yeah, no, the boys went all right. We stuck in it. But honestly, at 50 minutes, holy hecka, did the wheels fall off. Have you seen like those clips of like Formula One cars where like they drive off with the petrol thing still in them and then like the wheels are falling off and everything sets on fire? That's pretty much what happened to us. It was, uh, that was our review this morning. Just show that. Nah. Oh, boys, it was horrible. It was a horrible, horrible moment. And Hoggy was giving it big licks as well. Was it? Yeah. Ah, there he was. Hoggy, uh... oh, wind your neck in, mate. That was <laughs> uh, honestly, he was like celebrating before they'd even scored the fucking tries. Yeah, like perfect. bouncing around. Yeah. Oh, oh. god. If, if I had the opportunity, I would have torn his head off, his fake head off. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, he was um it, it was making up for something, I think. But yeah, it wasn't a great, it wasn't a great day out. We put it down to individual errors, and then you know what happens when st- things start getting your way away from you in a game like that. You end up chasing it like you wouldn't believe. Um, when that happened, we chased it to the point where we uh, capitulated. So, boys, it's done. Let's move on. La Rochelle this week at home. Oh, whoa. we'll be all right. Beat them. Qualify for Europe. Of course. Any um any chat with Jack Noll or sort of on or off the field after obviously you've had some good conversations with him on the pod. Yeah, yeah, cool. I had a chat with him actually after. He was kicking around with his top off. He likes to take his top off quite quickly, doesn't he? He's got some rig on him. With all those tattoos you've got, it's like another T-shirt. But he, um, he had a brief chat with him. Um, he, w- he was asking, I think he was asking one of the boys, Muzza, for some stories for when he came on with us last time off me. And we were laughing because Muzza was telling him stories about my old man, who, by the way, enjoyed himself. I don't think he knew what the score was. He was just absolutely buzzing, the old boy. I think my mum got a vape pipe taken off her in the crowd. Um, <laughs> can't take him anywhere. Oh, Max, no. do, your, do your parents come to many of your games, Max? Uh, sometimes. Not as often anymore. Too far for them in Bristol now. Yeah, it's the same with mine, especially with COVID. But yeah, have you ever, you've never had the old... Um, I've had two coaches actually say, listen, it's probably best that your mum and dad don't start a hotel anymore. <laughs> <laughs> That's how much they enjoy themselves. Yeah. It was uh, Sean Lanine did it once. Pulled me in the office on a Monday morning. Like, man, it's probably pissed your old man doesn't stay at the hotel anymore, mate. I suppose I think he might be bad for your preparation because he's just like in the bar. No matter what, the bus would pull up and we'd look at this mate, Treviso. We're in Treviso. He's got no idea where I'm staying. I don't know how he's found. Bus pulls up. There he is at the front, right? <laughs> and they're like, Wilson, your old man's here. Oh, no, not again. And it's night before the game, he's in the bar trying to get all the management pissed. Because, you know, the management go down to the bar and have a few beers. Yeah, they do. And he's in the mix trying to get everyone absolutely steaming the night before. So, he's um, yeah, he's upset a couple of coaches a few times. So, But he was proud. They were happy. He had no idea of the score. He was just happy I got 200 under my belt. Was there a nice celebration afterwards? No, not really. I um, 
I went and found him, took him up to the, that was the main thing. I just wanted to have a pint with my old man. So I found him, had a pint with him upstairs and then um, it wasn't really the place to celebrate. I know you, it sounds bad, but um, they did ask. The manager said, do you want us to present you with your cap here? And I was like, I'm probably not the place, mate. Let's do it back at Glasgow next week. So I think we'll we'll do that this week. But we had some nice messages. They They did a thing the night before and got some old boys doing a few messages. They were so funny, like some of them. Had a few guys like that shows how old I am. Off a fine Naku, one of the boys that used to play a big tong and prop. He's in Oz, gave up a while ago. He he left the message and boys like, who's that? Like that's how long ago it was. He was oh, back wow. in the club 10 years ago. Um Nico did me one max. Did he? <laughs> <laughs> Baby. Mate, it's so funny. I'm I'm 90% sure he was pissed when he did it as well. <laughs> and he's oh. there with his bottle of red wine and a glass. Hey, babies, just want to say, and like completely for how to speak English. This is for you, Wilson. Puts the, fills the glass up and chops the glass of red wine. <laughs> what a boy. What a boy. Uh, they did one and Cal Gibbons, John Bartley. So now it was nice. They, they made it special for me. But yeah, quicker we forget that one, the better. We are delighted to have on the show the man of the moment, uh, Alfie Barberi. Alfie, uh, congrats on the uh, incredible victory over the reigning European champions, Toulouse, on Saturday, uh, off the back of also beating a previously unbeaten Leicester. Uh, from your perspective, what's kind of changed over the last couple of weeks? I don't really I don't really know. I think we've sort of been the underdogs in the last last two games and sort of taken a lot of a lot of pressure off us, whereas some games we're sort of expected to win and we haven't really performed. And then these games games we've sort of just relaxed a little bit more played a better style of rugby and being able I think a bit just a bit grittier in terms of uh, not as soft uh, huge congratulations of course on your England call up you were uh, you were described in the times today as uh, all action hero Alfie Barberi how do we feel is that going to be the new nickname at work do we think uh, it's definitely not uh, yeah um yeah I wouldn't, I wouldn't go that far yeah well, yeah, no, they um, can't. They can't bloody stop you, man. How many tries you scored in seven games? Certain. It's more than I've done in my whole career, I think. <laughs> yeah, I'm on two. I'm yeah, on two I've, I've just got lucky. Yeah, in the right place at the right time, is it? That's right time. Yeah. <laughs> hey, we, hey, we've been talking you up. We've seen you just shrugging <laughs> people off. Absolute machine. Who goes from hooker to back row? I'm sure somewhere I read that you played twelve. Have I made that up in my head? Uh, no, I, I used to from about. For about under tens to about under eighteens, I always played uh, played schoolboy. I was at twelve. Yeah. Oh, oh yes, the dream. It was only till I first went to Wasps Academy, they went, "What position are you?" And I went, uh, "Centre slash back row." And you just said, "Hey, no, you're a hooker." Like, <laughs> yeah, real demoted completely. Oh, mate. Yeah, that's what I try now. I try. I still try and tell people I'm a twelve, but I swear they're going to try and push me in the row in a minute. Did Did you want to? Did you? Did, like who whose idea was it for you to change from hooker to back row now though? Was that sort of driven by you? Yeah, it was sort of um I sort of uh I knew Wasps were quite keen to sort of keep me a back row, been been going well there and I sort of I hadn't really had hadn't really played much as as ironic as it is. I was sort of a hooker that hadn't played any men's rugby at hooker. I sort of had one game when I was eighteen at Nottingham on loan for about half an hour at hooker and then the rest of it, I hadn't really played hooker at all. So I thought, I'm doing all right at back row. I'm really enjoying it. So I'll uh, I'll stick there. And that's really where the decision came from. Has Eddie asked you what position you want to be playing or has he told you what position you're going to be playing? No, it's sort of, um, it was just, uh, I think it was towards the end of, back end of last season, so coming back from injury, he sort of just... Uh, Sort of asked me like you've got to make a decision in terms of where you're going to play. Sort of, I was sort of, I was going around the bouncing between between positions, sort of seeing which which one I was going to choose. I was sort of trying to keep the best, best of both worlds, trying to keep everyone happy. And he sort of said, um, "Yeah, you got to make a decision. Just let me know, um, really." And that was the same for Wasps as they needed to do their recruitment for sort of the next season. So they said. For both parties, they sort of said, let us know what position you're going to be. And that was really it. And sort of spoke to a few people who knew me best. And we, we decided uh, back row 
<laughs> has um, have you spoken to Eddie recently, and and has he told you what he's what he wants from you? Um, not really. I haven't really uh, spoken to Eddie recently. Um, I've sort of had more more little chats here and there with sort of other coaches, but um, yeah, so, so I don't don't really don't really know lots of the chats about that, and sort of I've just got to try again with an open mind, sort of just be ready to be ready to be told what to do. Uh, Alfie, let's talk about your uh, your debut for Wasps. Uh, pretty probably one of the most talked about first starts in history when you scored a hat trick against Leicester, uh, becoming only the second player in history to do so after uh, the Kiwi legend Leslie Van Okodo. What are your memories of that day? Uh, I don't really remember a lot. Um, it's sort of just, it all just blurs into one sort of memory, just everything just going my way. And sort of, uh, I just remember getting called a lucky bastard after the game. So um, <laughs> I, I was just, I was sort of, I couldn't really dream of anything more. It was just, uh, yeah, it's hard to really explain. Just one of those moments that you can only dream of. And I was just lucky enough to be, <laughs> to get for it all to come my way. Alfie, Brad Shields has been saying that players and teams are now actually deliberately attacking you, hitting you harder. They know that you're a threat. Uh, have you sort of noticed any change in, in impetus of late? Or, or is the attention quite flattering? Um, I, I wouldn't say flattering. Uh, a, bit, a bit annoying. If, I think first time I sort of realised it was against London Irish from Boxing Day. I sort of got every sort of line out move that we sort of ran before I sort of put sort of just straight on two men on me I was like oh god um but yeah it's getting it's getting a bit like that. I've just got to adapt to it really it's uh how you just fight through it I don't, don't know really what to say you need to yeah. start chipping chasing mate you just need to beat more <laughs> defenders yeah, put the ball to boot, mate. Just start getting the old... And then, He's done that. He's done that already. Did that against Bristol last year. Bastard. Breaks more tackles than a 600-pound tuna. He dabbles at that as well, mate. Yeah, good stuff. Yeah, did a bit of everything, eh? Well, I suppose if you played 12, you'll know all about it. Yeah, you've got a bit of awareness, a bit of rugby IQ, unlike some of us. <laughs> Running into walls. <laughs> Does, does Lee Blackett sort of give you that f freedom to express yourself on the pitch? And, and, and then do you get a lot of chat from the boys when it goes wrong? Um, I'd say it does give me that. Uh, exactly express myself on the pitch, but it's a pinch of salt in terms of if I did run for a chip and chase. I have gone for a chip and chase before uh, against Gloucester but last, last season, yeah, or two seasons ago. I went for a chip and chase just completely wrong to say more of an up and under and sort of nowhere near it either so uh i do get a bit of shit for that but he, as long as it comes off i'm all right i'm all right or looks like it might come see, off. see this is where you should we should try stuff more like this as forwards like because a lot of the time you do it and and the boys just laugh it off it's quite funny I like, see that was it Pasilli Yato <laughs> when he tried that one. On the oh, scene? yeah, that was bad. And he just kicked yeah. himself and he just burst out laughing. He literally was, <laughs> yeah, like, was everyone's, sour. Everyone's oh. just got the giggles. Like, it's all right for a forward to fuck it up. <laughs> so, I'm actually going to, I'm maybe going to try a little bit more. I'm going to try a little bit more, definitely. Uh, Alfie, how did you guys celebrate the victory on Saturday night? Surely, uh, Coventry, does it have that much going for such a momentous? Win. He's in the spa. He's in Leamington, aren't you, boy? No? Yeah, yeah Lem Leamington. Um, there's uh, not a lot going on up uh, up here. <laughs> um, to be to be perfectly honest, it's pretty uh, pretty quiet. Who you brought up? Pretty quiet. Um, brought up, brought up just uh, between Oxford and Banbury, sort of a little uh, yes. village. But so Oxford would have been right your stomping there. ground. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Fuzzy ducks, you dabble. Uh, <laughs> uh, yes. What is, what is that? A strip club? <laughs> no, no, no. It's a student bar. Oh. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> but good to see where your head's at, Ryan. <laughs> fuzzy ducks or fuzzy fucks? <laughs> you got the pen out. <laughs> uh, what? So, what did the lads actually do to celebrate? Um. Well, a few of us sort of. 
those few beers in the change room it was uh, nice. I got to see uh, my old my old housemate have a beer with him. He's sort of uh, Thierry Flamont I used to live with, sort of the French French second row. So he sort of had a beer with him, quite relaxed. And uh, some boys sort of heading to Leamington and some boys headed to London. So it was a bit mixed. I think everyone was... Uh, Everyone was on cloud nine, really. Mate, I know who headed to London, Francois, one hundred percent. That bloke, that bloke's not going out in limiting, is he? <laughs> he's, <not. laughs> mate, uh, he's, <laughs> he's big time. Mate, he? he is big time. Lambos, <laughs> fake hair, the teeth. <laughs> I've never seen a more well, a better groomed man than him. I look at him. Uh, Stuart Hogg and him are running on par for the amount of work done at the moment. <laughs> What's Stu Hogg? Has his Stu Hogg done a lot as well? I'm pretty sure Hoggy had fake tan on when I saw him. No. Have you seen the Nashers? Yeah, no, I know. He's definitely one of those people who has the thing at home and does the gel. And yeah. <laughs> What's that? Have you all seen that? Everyone, a high, a high smile or whatever it's called, I smile. Oh, Look at right, me, right. I'm an influencer. And you'd shove that thing in when you put the gel in and it's got like the blue light you shove in there. Mate. They hurt so bad. I tried it once. It hurts so much. Well, my teeth anyway. I don't know what it is, but something happens in there and it just burns the roots. Well, Avi, look, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, really appreciated uh, your time and good luck for the rest of the season and uh, good luck for the Six Nations. Hopefully you get some caps under your belt. Well, I'm delighted to, to welcome on the show Lions and Irish legend Rob Carney and Ryan Wilson's best friend in the whole world. How is life? Rob. According to Ryan Wilson. Whoa, 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 Rob, Rob. We had a word about this, mate. What are you doing? It's too early for that. All is great. Thanks, Mark. Yeah, living the dream. Um, life of a retired rugby player is, it's good fun. I'm enjoying it now, I must say. Fucking two writers. He's been in Dubai, then got stuck there because of COVID and had an extra week's holiday, and then he's gone and... Where have you been now? You're skiing. I was skiing in France. Yeah. It's uh it's good. It's good. I don't get black eyes like you anymore. Not that I ever got too many of those. Because yeah, you need to sense. tackle to get them. As as Ryan's just been describing quite nicely, you know, you got to cozy up with him during the Barbarians uh, training week. Honestly, what was your reaction when you found out you were going to be sharing with him? Oh, honestly, like this is not a joke. I, I genuinely thought about asking for a room of my own. Like, it was the one person. I looked at the whole squad and I was like, please, just anybody but Ryan Wilson. Like, I'd not really met him before. Okay. We'd obviously played against each other a few times. Um, but as, as Ryan well knows, he's got a few enemies in this country. <laughs> um, but... At least now you've got a really best friend in Dublin who can, who's got your back. Mate, that's all I need. Oi, you know, you boys think he's sort of joking. You know, he's deadly serious. He actually <laughs> would have been thinking that before he came and remember me. And a bit of me, when I put, when I got there and they were like, oh, you're with your friend, Mr. Carney. I was like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> now, to be fair, it's more the Monster Boys, isn't it, than the Lancer? Or do Lancer dislike you too? Oh, nah, I'd probably get on with the Leinster boys a little bit more. I oh, know a lot more than Munster, but I don't, I still don't really, I wouldn't say I'd get on with them, but they're all right now. Now that you're my mate, it's yeah, but, all, all my issues. But Zeebs has your, your pal Simon Zebo has your back down in, in Limerick, doesn't he? Nah, mate, he'd have a knife straight in it again. The way he's back there now, he's properly back there now. What's the backstory in this? What happened, month, what happened? Just the, over the years of playing against the Irish teams, the Leinsters and Munsters, and it's always been a bit of a battle, eh? So just getting stuck into each other. Munster really don't like me. The whole thing with Zeebs and that uh, that story of the boys telling him he wasn't allowed to follow me on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a true story? <laughs> it's a true story, man. It's a true story. He, he, he um, yeah, he followed me and they messaged him saying, why are you following that? See you next Tuesday. <laughs> And he, un <laughs> mate, and he unfollowed me. Wow. Mate, you must have done some He unfollowed weird stuff. you. He unfollowed me. He unfollowed me. Do you know what, actually? I, I asked him for something on you, and he's, he's left me a voice note, but I won't play it out loud just in case. But there's a minute long thing. I haven't even listened to it yet. 
Oh, well, you can be I mean, sure there's something. Rob, there. did you? Rob, did you get any shit from your sort of previous teammates about becoming good friends with Ryan? Uh, yeah, like of course, Johnny Sexton is Johnny likes to, like he he likes to stay at home a lot. He, he doesn't go out and about a huge amount, and he'll always be looking on Instagram and Twitter and seeing what's happened. And he messaged me. Oh, I think it was two days into it. He was because I was getting married the following week. And he was like, oh, is your new best friend, Ryan Wilson, coming to the wedding now? And <laughs> the story of the week, I think myself and Ryan were probably having a few beers at the time. So we were getting cheeky with him. I was like, yeah, he's coming to the wedding. I'm going to sit him beside you. He said he's going to kick the shit out of you. And then Sexton was getting all cheeky and giddy. And what did he say? Something about getting, he needs to practice getting out of headlocks, didn't he? Because apparently to Johnny, that's all Ryan does on the field is just get people into headlocks. <laughs> <laughs> Which isn't too far from the truth. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. That's what made me so happy is that I could um I could make sure that I made you my friends and now they all have to like me as well. But you you were you were exchanging voice notes by the end of the week, weren't you? Oh best mates, me and me and sexto. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> It is funny though, hey, how you get perception of people. And that was the same with me with some of the boys there, Rob. Like, you know, as South Africans and that, you, you build up a perception of people on the field and then you get to meet them off the field. And there wasn't a bad bloke there, was there? No, and, and that's what I've always loved about, about Lions tours going down through the years and, and the Babas that week is you do have perceptions of people. You know, you, you look at how they act on the field and you think, oh, he's a right prick or whatever. Um, and more often than not, they're the people that you generally warm to more. Um, and they, they're always the ones that surprise you. So, you know, like, I think we hit it off pretty quickly, Ryan, didn't we? Like, after a few hours, we were, you know, it was, it was day three. We pushed the beds together and we were snuggling in. Exactly, mate. <laughs> instantly, instantly. I know. That's it. Like, that's what I always say. If you're a shit bloke in rugby, you won't last long, so... A couple of old dogs like us, mate. Tick and tin. Well, what was your best example? What was your best example example of that that kind of misperception that you had of somebody on a tour, perhaps a Lions tour, and then they turn out to be an absolute legend? Um, do you know what? Like the, the, this question gets asked a lot, not just with me, but with other players too. And Mike Phillips is generally one of the names that keeps coming back time and time again. One of those lads on the pitch, he's so mouthy. He's always looking for scraps. Um, but he's a legend of a bloke. He's, he's hilariously funny. Uh, always a real good energy about him. And, and people sort of, you know, just roam towards him on a daily basis. Wherever he was, generally there was most of the lads hanging around him having a good crack. It's because, you know, with Mike, it's like he's got this perception of being really arrogant as well, but it's actually the way his banter is. Like, he's like, you know, I was the best nine in the world. I'm like, deadly serious about it. Oh, <laughs> yeah. And I think that, that <laughs> it's, it's his humour and, and how, how much he backs himself. That it's, <laughs> yes. it's so endearing. It's endearing. And you can only be like, admire somebody with that level of self-confidence. Yeah, he, uh, he's funny, eh? He was, he was another one when he came on here. I was thinking, oh, I don't know. Yeah, I've heard a few stories about this fella, but he was a good crack. He's a funny bloke. Oh, good. Yeah, no, he's he, he's a good fella. Max, you're very quiet this evening. Is everything okay? You guys are just dominating. I'm just letting you... You're the guest, sir. You're the guest of honour. I'm letting you get your dialogue across. I was actually going to ask you, what, what what are you looking forward to about reinventing yourself? Have you... Have you had like a weird identity crisis now that something's so kind of meaningful in your life's over? Like, what do you want no, to go on to yet. next? I think I'm yet to find that period in my life where I'm going to reinvent myself. It's certainly something that I intend on doing. However, I'm, right I'm struggling to find, the, find that at this moment in time. But you, there's not enough pies for him he's got fingers in absolute oh really he's that's, in all that's sorts another of thing i realized is <laughs> like a renaissance man 
Oh, that's what I said to him. I was like, oh. Mate, are you a little bit nervous about like retiring and that? Like, what are you going to do? And he's like, oh, I'm not really, you know. And then we just got chatting. Slowly, the more I found out, well, the more I found out that he's, uh, yeah, heavily involved in some very good businesses. Always on the no, I just, I just, I just, that's that. I think that's unfair. I just live a very simple life. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think that's. So I just, I, en- I enjoy a couple of pints on the weekend in my local boozer and. Which you won't. Sandwiches make make. (laughs) (laughs) Hold on, hold on. Which you own? Yeah, well, you get discount. (laughs) Yeah, I'm like, there we are. (laughs) Oh, incredible! Listen, you're no stranger to pulling a few swings and discounts and this and that. We were in the room one day, and and a delivery came in, and it was a, a box full of like these little turmeric juices. You'd swear the chap had just won the national lottery. He was like, yes, my turmeric juices have arrived. <laughs> Mate, they were what were keeping us alive, man. Mate, you need those for the shoulders, don't you, right? It's that anti-inflammatory goodness for the trout shoulders. And I just hoped it had some sort of effect on the hangovers. <sighs> oh, it did have good effect on the hangovers. We really sent it on that barbarian strip. Like, we every single night and on, on the thursday night i think we got in we were back in the room at about 12 o'clock and i mean the captain's run the following morning at half eight and i was tired and like bearing in mind i had not touched a rugby ball in, in six months prior to that and um, because i finished up at western force in june and you know when you're a player you're always like oh i'd love a few beers with the boys this week but i've got training tomorrow this was the first time in my life where i actually was thinking oh, I'd love to train tomorrow without having beers on me. Um, but we were getting ready for bed about 12 o'clock and he was like, you, jeans, shirt, now we're gone. I was like, Good. okay, I'm all for barbarians, piss-ups, maybe Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, but Thursday night, surely we should. <laughs> surely we should think this one through. Um, anyway, we strolled back into our bedroom, I think four o'clock in the morning um, and we were up at eight for a captain's run. Oh, mate, running around in bungee smugglers. Oh, yeah, in the freezing cold. I'm pretty sure we were still half pissed for that session. Yeah. Thank God we had the world's soundest, coolest coach in charge of us. You've got, and this is a bit of a bit of a jump on this, Rob, you've got an incredibly famous cousin. Can you reveal to us who he is and also if you've had any conversations of late? Um, so my very famous cousin is Joe Biden. For uh, Ryan, that's that's the president of the United States, mate. Mate, you know I know this already. So go on, smart ass, carry on. Um, yeah, well, I, he he. So after, yeah, I've I've spoken to him a few times. Uh, I went over to visit him in the White House in Washington. He gave me a full tour of the place, and then he came back to Dublin in 2017. And I went out for dinner with him and his brother which was incredible. Like the level of intellect from the man just blew me away. I think I just sat at dinner for three hours and offered nothing to the conversation. Um, at the, the, when Ireland beat the All Blacks in November, I was doing some, some corporate work and my jacket got robbed and I had my wallet, my house key, my car key, everything was in it. So I was all over the place looking to find it. And up on my phone came three missed calls from Washington, D.C. Um, but I was trying to find my jacket at the time, so I wasn't too concerned about who was calling me. Um, so I got a missed call, uh, a voice message, went into the voice ma- message, and, and it was a phone call from him congratulating me on, on the victory over New Zealand. I'm not sure if he thought I was still playing or not. Unfortunately, uh, for him, maybe the story wasn't as good as it was. But I called back the number then about an hour later and some, I think one of his chief of staff answered. And I was like, oh, I'm just uh, returning uh, Uncle Joe's uh, voice call. And she was like, sir, you've missed your opportunity. You should listen to your voicemails. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, wow. maybe, maybe we're not as close as I thought. Uh, we're just going to take a, a quick pause now. And Rob, we're going to do a part of the show, uh, which is Max's book club, where Max reads an autobi- a, a passage from an autobiography and yourself and Ryan need to guess who wrote that autobiography. Here we go. Okay, let's get weird. I'm going to take notes. 
<clears throat> yeah, but take some notes. This is a long, long passage. All right. Oh, is it? No, not that long. Relax, relax. You've got the attention span of the... Ma- right, here we go. Was had given me a training program, and it worked. In just three or four weeks, I got rid of about 14 kg, but I was getting carried away with it. So instead of eating properly on my days off from training, I was just chowing down on bananas and milk every three hours. I know it sounds crazy now, but it made sense to me at the time. If I kept having bananas and milk, the weight would come off, I told myself. I'm stupid, but when you get caught up in something like that, you honestly think you're doing the right thing. But I was wrong. I'm now feeling so ill. I don't think I've ever felt this ill. I know everyone says that when they get ill because they forget what being really ill is like. But this isn't just that. I actually feel so awful. I've got the shakes, actual shaking all over my body. Shivering, shaking, sweating. I can't stop these cold sweats. I just want it to stop. And my back is killing me. Something isn't right. I know that something isn't right. Where it was, I'm still shaking and freezing. The physio is looking at me with a concerned face. Eventually he says, you look ill. That much I already know. (laughs) Go and get checked out, is his advice, which I take. So now I'm in the car with my dad again, heading all the way back to High Wycombe, to the hospital to be precise, to A&E. My back is now more painful than I can ever remember it, anything being. And now not only is my back killing me more and more, each second passes, but this is all happening in public, in the waiting area of a hospital casualty unit. It's so frustrating, both the pain and the waiting. I can feel myself becoming increasingly agitated. How can I be made to wait like this? How could any human be treated this way? I know I need to tough this one out, but I just can't do it anymore. My dad's trying to calm me down as he senses my mood changing, but it's no use. I'm crying. I'm bawling my eyes out. I'm sobbing in the middle of hospital in front of everyone. Are these guys taking the piss? I protest. I'm dying here and no one's trying to help me out. People are staring at me. I try to wipe the tears away. This is a low. I know it can't get any worse than this. And I'm right. Turns out that you can't really tough out pneumonia. What's more, you can't really tough out decitis, a serious back infection. Take it away, gentlemen. Is is that it? Yeah, that's hard. All you've got, all you've got. Impossible. No, I know. I, I, I I feel for you. All you know is he's from wasps. He's a wasp player. He lost loads of weight, so he's obviously a bit fat. He loves bananas and milk, and his dad used to drive him around. Yeah, yeah, and what's worse is so we're thinking he's young. Man. Hold on a minute, can you just oh, what, the accent was that close to where he's from? Uh, he's he's got a weird accent. Well, can you give it to us? Is it's it- basically in, he's bas- he's he's English. He's English. Yeah, he's right. Do you know any know, only... players that lost fourteen kilograms that have a book out cards? Well, it's a forward. Why? Yeah, uh, if you're a back losing 14 kilos, you probably shouldn't be a back, should you? No, I mean, yeah, I'm with you. Back, back, backs right better books than that. <laughs> um, yes, here we go. Have you, Ryan, have you, have you any names? Yeah, I've, I've written, got two names. To- I've written one down, but I'm sure there's a better story than that. Oh. The, I'm, I'm you've, got, you've written you've written Lawrence Delalio, haven't you? I wrote James Haskell, but <laughs> because he's the only one I know uh, that. Incorrect. Mm. How does he talk again? Did he play for England? Yeah, he did. He talks like um. Does he still play now? No, he's retired, isn't he? No, he still plays, but not. Oh, he still plays. Ah, he that's plays, yeah. 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 Okay. Well, can whoever's giving you these passages make it? So that we can actually tell Fred, guess tell Fred this, God damn it. Well, if I, I'm, I'm afraid for once in this whole ever thing that we've done this, I, I fucking haven't got a clue because. Okay, well, don't give up that easy. Who, who had Christ. pneumonia? Who had pneumonia? I'm just that's, that's my question. Okay, this is a wild. Okay, well, which, this is a wild which English internationals played for wasps? Will that narrow it down? Was he always at Wasps? He started off at Wasps. Dun, dun, dun. And he still plays now? Yeah. And he's got a book out now? Yeah. 
Who's got it's a book definitely out that still a Ford. Plays? Definitely a Ford. Who's got a book out that still plays? Who's got a book out that still plays? Mm. He's got to be old. He's got to be over 30. I reckon he's late 20s. What? And he's got a book out. Bloody hell. Mm-hmm. He's some sort of rock star. Yeah, isn't he? who is this fella? Fucking. He... Right, hold on. That's, that's, so it's not James Haskell. He's won, he's won like. He's won a lot of stuff already. He's won most of the domestic comps. Ah, uh, not with wasps. He didn't. He's moved to Saris, has yeah, he? Yeah, he's at Saris. He's moved. Uh, I, forward. Like a, a Vunapola. Boom. Boom. But, well, which one? The Mac. Billy. Oh, Billy's the only one who went to Boston. Yeah. Oh yeah. There you are. Yeah. Mako doesn't have a book. Well done, Ryan. Hey. I can't take any credit for that. No, no, you really helped me there. I thought we worked so well together. It's like yeah, he, you know, he kept you friends. even keeled. You were freaking out. He brought you back. Yeah, he did, and that's what best friends do for each other. Yeah, that's exactly what they do. Yes, we just make such a good team. Oh, In the wedding present, God. by the way, did it <laughs> come? Romantic. Uh, oh no, it's not. Yeah, it it did arrive. It did. Yeah, good. I'm glad. I'm, you know, obviously, weird. thanks for the invite <laughs> and. Uh, it's a pretty weird present. <laughs> yeah. My my missus is reluctant to use it, but but oh. <laughs> I, I I knew that you were gonna send something so crazily weird, oh, but sort of... I'll let you know how we go when 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 we try it oh, out. Good. That's what friends do. Oh growl. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, by the way, Rob, before I, I've got to ask before you leave, have you, did you ever manage to buy yourself some NFTs? That was what we were left with. We were meant to be doing that, but we were too drunk. Oh, no, I didn't. I, I, I bought some, some crypto there last week when it hit absolute rock bottom. Uh, um, by the dip. By the dip. The, the, the market is, is bullish. Is that, is, that, is that what they say? Oh, no, we're in, we're in a bear. We're in a bear market at the moment. <clears throat> we're about to hit the We'll hit a bull run soon, but listen, boys, just so you know, and I bought myself a uh, an apartment in the metaverse. No, no, you didn't. No, you didn't. You're lying. I am, a, <laughs> I am now an official <laughs> owner of an apartment in the metaverse. No, with I don't theory, believe you. Ethereum. Ryan, I'm going to I'm gonna take this opportunity to congratulate you on owning your first property. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks so much. <laughs> Boys have did you me. build this? Did you build this one from scratch too? No, no, I'm yet to learn how to do that. I don't know how to do that. I'm sure I can only decorate it. But yeah, yeah. Ethereum towers. Um, oh, this is even better. Where do you? Where Where did you go to buy that? Oh, the, the, Max, this is so complicated. Like he tried to show me, and my mind was blown. Hold on, I've got an even better bat though. My next door neighbour. My next door neighbor is a guy called Jason Belmo, and he is the world's number one tempin bowler. <laughs> is that? So I'm going to be nipping around to his apartment. I'm, he's definitely going to build a bowling alley in his apartment, isn't he? That's well, why so I was looking into this. They cost like, well, for like a plot of land in um, the central land, it's like 250 US, uh, 250,000 USD, isn't it? Or 150,000. Well, yeah, you, you can pick up a little square for about $15,000. So I'll, uh, I'll get on to you about it, Rob. We'll, we'll have to invest. So, so the, the, the world champion 10 pin bowler and a 50 cap Scottish legend are side by side. Right next door. <laughs> I can nip round for a coffee. Oh, my God. This is fantastic. <laughs> for a virtual cup of sugar. How good. Oh, my boys, I'll try and get him on the show. <laughs> <laughs> Has Gregor Townsend got the other apartment next door? No way. He's not allowed it. <laughs> yeah, so, oh, no, I was just checking because we were we were in the process. Rob was like, yeah, we were trying to-, to get me something and, and we never really had time, did we? No, we'll hook up again. Oh, yes, we will. Maybe we can have some Bloody Marys. I'm, I'm definitely being nudged to, to ask Rob a couple of questions that... Obviously, the metaverse is very important, and and um, his choice of drinks on a Sunday morning. But um, Rob, you played ninety five times for Ireland, winning the Six Nations four times. Of all of those victories, what was the greatest night out that you had? Uh, Two thousand and nine in Cardiff. Um, that place is absolutely wild. 
And now bearing in mind, I was 23 and single at the time, which probably altered my impression of the night out. <laughs> is, is there a, a, a club in, in Cardiff, Tiger Tiger? Yeah, there is, isn't it? Yeah, there is, yeah. When I die, I want some of my ashes to be buried underneath that dashboard. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> yeah, so it was it was Cardiff for me. That's, it stops there. He's not going to tell you what happened. It stops there. <laughs> Rob, you played against some uh, pretty dirty players in your time. Um, you mentioned Brian for club and country, but uh, that Andrea Massey tackle on you in the first minute of the Six Nations, surely that goes down as the worst. Can you deliver your recollections from that moment and the aftermath? Um, yeah, I can. I've, I, and he played with Wasps uh, for a long time, didn't he? And, but by all accounts, again, he's, he's a, a bloke that, that seemed pretty popular and guys got on with. Um, but I'll never forget after that, he stood up uh, right over like he clean clothesline he was nearly took my head off um, and I jumped up and he was screaming in my face he was like you like that motherfucker you like that motherfucker <laughs> and I, I thought this guy was absolutely off the wall crazy and then I saw him at the post-match function that night and he had this look in his eyes he was staring at me I was like surely an apology wouldn't go astray well, that was so I was 23. It was my <laughs> second Six Nations. And I knew the Italians were passionate, but I didn't think they were that bonkers. That was a proper clothesline, eh? <laughs> Jesus, man. I love that he carried that on yeah. all the way through. He's, he stayed in character throughout. Yeah, I great. played against him a few times after that. Uh, and we played Wasps in the Heineken Cup a few years later. I remember going over thinking, oh, I'm sure, you know, things have settled down a bit now. He'll take this opportunity to say, oh, I remember that. Yeah, sorry, I didn't mean to, even though he clearly did. Um, but no, nothing. I'm still, to this day, waiting apology, for an apology. Yes. <laughs> but as, as, as you can see, I've, I've gotten over it. I'm, yeah. I'm, I, I, <laughs> it's Don't not worry. sticking thinking... with me, I swear. <laughs> He's thinking that's what deathbeds are for. So you, you can look forward to one later on. Um, Rob, just on the field, you put in one of the greatest individual performances of all time in the Test match in Pretoria. When you look back on that game, is that the best you've ever played? Um, no, I, I, I don't think it was the best game of, of rugby I've ever played. Um, but at that moment in time and for for the occasion that it was it's probably the game that that i'm most proud of um you know i was still really young i got really sick in april of that year with the mumps i was in hospital for 10 days so i i was pretty lucky to actually go on the tour in the first place and i hadn't played a huge amount throughout that campaign lee Byrne was on fire that whole season and playing really well um and I came on in the first test in the second half, went all right. And then the following week had one of, you know, one of the greatest performances that I've ever had. So I was sort of, you know, there was nothing to suggest. It's not as if I went into that tour with, with really good form and, you know, having shot the lights out for the season before. Um, you know, so it was just, it was, it was one of those days where, you know, you, you have them a few times in your career where you feel as if you just can't make any mistakes and whatever you do just comes off. Um, you know, so I'm just really grateful that I was able to have one of those days on the biggest of, of test arenas. Ours are yet to come Max. One of those days where you just can't do anything wrong. <laughs> you know? when, oh, yeah, when will it come? <laughs> please, please. The Babas was your day. I could feel the energy in the oh. room. That was going to be your moment. Hey, still hope. Are you keeping fit, my old mate? Because I tell you, when the when the and call God, comes, you're going to get me back there, aren't you? I think I might take over the role of kicking coach or backfield defense. Mate, you, you genuinely think if it came, you wouldn't be able to play? No, no way. Why? You've been skiing, isn't that exercise? No, because I'm about. 14 kilos lighter. What, since you know, two all, months ago? Yeah, all as I've been drinking and eating is bananas and milk. My back is sore. <laughs> Very good. Very good. I don't know if I've, 
I wouldn't be able for the pain of a rugby match. Mate, you're going to be fine. I know you are. I'm telling you, you'll be, we'll be back there soon together. You know, I hope you're right. I hope you're right. Hey, I've got a question for you. I don't, I don't want to answer a question from you. Well, I've got a question for you. And I am also one of the hosts of this show, so you have to answer it. Why, okay, do, don't why, why do they call you Shoot McGavin from school? <laughs> Who doesn't like this question? <laughs> Shooter. I, I genuinely don't know. I've just been sent this by someone. Who was that, Zeebs? I don't know who it was. I can't remember. Oh. <laughs> well, when I, when I was a bit younger, I was probably a little bit ahead of my station, maybe. <laughs> like, you know the way Shooter would always just walk around like... <laughs> <laughs> And was, we, we had one match and I was goal kicking. Um, it was at these schoolboy games and there was like five or 6,000 people at it and the opposition were abusing me like the whole game. Um, and and I, I kicked a conversion uh, at one point. They were screaming at me during it and I just turned around. And like, <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> fair. <laughs> oh my god, that is amazing! <laughs> I got a lot of time for that. Uh, shooter, that's incredible. <laughs> that's incredible. See, I didn't know that. That's made me happy knowing that. Yeah, and it makes me a prick. <laughs> oh, it doesn't. At least you can laugh about it. <laughs> oh, wonderful. Uh, sadly, that is all the time we've got left for now. As always, thank you to Max and to Ryan. And thank you so much to Rob and to Alfie as well for joining us. Uh, do like and subscribe and we'll see you all next week. See you later.